In this episode of Premiere Pro Basics, we're going to go over the toolbar. This is how I have my different panels. Down here I have the toolbar set up. Let's make that go away for a second. If you don't see that toolbar, go over to Windows and down to Tools and the toolbar will appear over here. I personally like to make it small like that. You can make it big like that, however you want. I like to just tuck it over here as that gives me more space to edit my videos over here. These are all your different tools. You simply click on each one like that. It usually comes up by default on the selection tool. The selection tool is basically, there's your arrow. You can click up in here. You can click over here. You can click up in this area. That's all this does is it gives you an arrow and allows you to drag and resize things and stuff like that. You'll use this a lot. Let's say you have this selected below. There's a keyboard shortcut to automatically go up to this selection tool. It's V as in Victor. Next up we have the track selection tool. The keyboard shortcut for that is A. You'll notice this one up here has nothing at the end. On the track selection tool, you notice this little tiny arrow right there. That indicates that there's more to be seen or options. If I click on that little guy right there, what it does is it pops up the different things you can do. In this case, the track selection tool here is saying I want to track select things forward. And this does the reverse. I want to track things backwards. Let me show you. We have the track selection tool selected. Now if I select over here, it now select all clips right there all the way forward. Let's go to the backward tool. Now when I select here, it selects all these tracks from there backward. So you'll notice these over here, that's the keyboard command. For this one, track select forward is A. To track select backwards, it's Shift A. So if I type in A, I'm track selecting forward. You'll notice by the icon, if I do Shift A, now notice the icon has reversed to track select backwards. Let me move this clip up one track. Now if I do A to select forward, it selects everything. It will select, if you had 22 tracks above and below, it would select all video and audio tracks all the way down from where you clicked. There it is again. If I use Shift A, notice what happened. It selected all these clips forward but only in this track. That's really handy. Let's say you had this track and you wanted to move some things around. Do shift, select those. Without the shift key, it selects all the tracks up and down. Let's select the backwards. Same thing happens in reverse. When I select from here, this point right here, it selects all these tracks backwards. If I select it on this one, same thing, all these tracks backwards. If I hold down the shift key, and selected this, it would only select this track and all those backwards. If I click here, I'm holding down the shift key, it selects only this particular track. To get back to normal selection, I just hit V and I'm back to just single selection. Next one is the ripple edit tool. The selection for that is B. Let me give you an example of how this works. Watch what happens. When I move the end of this clip and I make it shorter, it makes this clip shorter and it moves all the clips down. Let's undo that. If I take the end of this clip and I make it longer, it's going to make the clip longer and it's going to move those over. Now let's go between these two and hold down the control key. Now what happens is as I move these, I make the clip smaller. Notice it stayed the same place and made this clip shorter and made this clip longer. Let's see that again. Boop. Here we are. Let's put a marker right here. I'm going to hit M. See where that marker is? Now I hold on to the control key. And when I move this down, I'm shortening the left clip and I'm lengthening the right clip. Boop. It stayed the same. Let's undo that. Same axis in reverse. Extending it. They're still the same length that made this clip longer and this clip shorter. So without holding the control key down, when I make this clip shorter, boop, what it did was it made it shorter. When I make this clip longer, then it made everything longer. 
I hope you see the difference. So the next in this one, let's just hit this drop down here. That's the rolling edit tool, N. So here's an example manually. Let's say I have this clip here, and what I wanna do is I wanna move, I'll move this up. What I wanna do is I wanna move where it ends further down the line. Now I don't have enough room here for it to fit. So I move this over here, and I move the start right there, and then I can pop that back in there. Now I've changed where it starts, and I've changed where it ends. Undo all this, deep, 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 Deep. Instead of doing all of that, we can use rolling edit tool. Rolling edit was like I just showed you holding down the control key. If I select this side and move it down, the clips are the same. It lengthened this clip and it shortened this clip. Let's undo that. Let's make it longer. It made this clip longer and it made this clip shorter. And that's a rolling edit. Let's undo that. So it keeps the length of the whole timeline the same. Let's check out the next tool. This is the Rate Stretch tool. It's R on the keyboard. So let's say I have this clip. It's kind of slow mode, everything else. All I care about is I want it to play at whatever speed and I want it to play right there. I'm gonna use the Red Stretch tool. I'm gonna move that down here. Now watch what happened to the clip. It sped it up. I want to close this intervening space here. I hit V on the keyboard. I select that space. I hit Shift Delete. And the space is closed up. So now we have this. You can go the other way too. Let's undo all that. Now because I want to stretch this rate this way, it's not going to really know what to do this. I want to leave all these clips alone and I want to stretch this rate. So to do that, I'm gonna hit V on the keyboard and move it up one, so I have room for it. I'm gonna click on the Rate Stretch tool, and now I'm gonna stretch this thing longer. Let's stretch it like that long. Now it's gonna start at the same point, it's gonna end at the same point, but it's gonna be in like a slow mode mode, watch this. What's really cool is Premiere Pro does a great job of filling in the intervening frame so it looks pretty normal. That's neat. So now if I wanted to make room for this, I could use my track selection tool. I'll just press A on the keyboard and move all these down. V, drag this back in. Does a really legit job of doing this and filling in these frames so it looks like slow-mo. Let's go grab some music and drop it in here. So you notice that I have these four clips. My video is this long, and I threw in this audio track. Going through and trying to make this begin and end, and you have to chop all this stuff up and make sure things go one to another. New to Premiere Pro 2022 is this audio remix tool right here. If you select that tool, you can click on the end of your audio, move it down to a certain point, now it's processing the audio, and what it's done is it's attempted to take all these clips and chop them to this length. If I wanted it to end a little longer, I could just grab the end of this, make it like that, it will restructure it. This is so cool, and these clips are dead on. Right here is where it saw the cuts. It cut there, it cut there, and it cut there. They are seamless. Over here to the right, you have some controls with this audio remix tool. For instance, let's flip down this custom. If I want to, I can say how many segments I want it, and I can say how many variations I want it. Let's just go crazy here and say I want a bunch of segments, and I want a bunch of variations. You'll notice over here, it changed the clips and what were, where the cuts were and everything else, but not the length. This saves me so much time, I can't, I, you can't even imagine. This is one of the coolest new features in 2022 that they added. I love this thing. It saves me so much time. Let's move these clips up so I can show you the razor tool. On the razor tool, we'll click right here. When I click somewhere, it's going to cut there, cut there, cut there. It's cutting this track up. Chop, 
chop, chop, chop. Let's undo that. Now watch what happens when I select this razor tool and I hold the shift key. See how the line goes all the way down? That will cut every track where you click. You could have 50 tracks above, you could have 50 audio tracks below, it will chop them all. Watch this. Boink, cuts them all. Boink, cuts them all. So let's say I just want to quickly cut this little piece out of here. I don't necessarily want to move this over or anything. I just want to cut this little piece out in the middle. We hit the razor tool and I cut this and I cut this. Now I'm going back to V, the selection tool, and I'm selecting that piece and hitting Shift Delete to close it up. And now I've chopped between the two. Next we have the slip tool right there. Its keyboard equivalent is Y. This begins at a certain point here and it ends at this point. Let's say I want to move where it begins and ends right there in line. You'll notice with the slip tool it's showing me where the beginning and the end is. I can move this back and forth. Let's say I want it to begin and end there. Let go. It's gone through and it's basically slipped this within itself here in time without having to change anything. Next we have the slide tool or U. This is the opposite of the ripple tool. You're moving one clip in this timeline without changing these in and out points. Let me show you. I'm selecting this clip. I'm going to move it to the left. And notice up in the right hand corner it's showing you where things are what's before it, what's after it, and what you're moving it to. Drop it. Bink. Now it's gone through. It's cut that one. It started that one. That one ends there. Really handy. Next we have the pen tool. Its equivalent is P. Let's just have a little fun. Click there, 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 click there. You notice when you use the pen tool it adds another segment up here and you simply click to put that on there or if you click and drag you can make corners. Frankly I haven't found much use for this tool. If you have a use for it leave a comment below. Next we have these rectangle, ellipse, and polygon tools. Let's just take a look at the rectangle tool. If I go up to my video and I select I can draw a rectangle of any width, height, etc. like that. This doesn't look very handy. But let's go up to the Windows menu, add back in central graphics and this all appears. Click over here. Let's click off that. Bink. Nothing there. Bink. You have all sorts of controls here. Let's click on the shape and there you go. I won't go too much into these. You can control the height, width, size, rotation, all sorts of stuff. Right here I can click on this and change the color. Let's say I want to make this red. Cool. Let's try another color. What I usually do is I make these black. I say OK. So I can move this little bar here. It's currently at 100% and let's say I want to put a title on there. I just drop this down a little bit like that. Now over here what I can do is put some text on here. You'll see that a little later in the video. It allows you to put up like little titles of things you're doing or instructions or something like that. Very handy. You can do all sorts of things like this. For instance, here's a stroke. Let's make it bigger. Now I've made a see-through object with a white around it. We could change that to any color we like. White, red, anything in between. I'd probably leave it at white. So you can have these callouts pop up or instructions or even put in little pieces of video in there as the video is playing. Very handy. The ellipse tool is basically a circle. You can do the same thing. A polygon, it just allows you to draw a multi-cornered thing. All the controls are all the same. I'll leave that to your creational ability to have fun with. Next is the hand tool, which is H. I use this all the time. You may not think this does much. Let me show you an example. Let's go up here for a moment. Now I've mapped my zoom in and zoom out to plus and minus. So let's zoom in on this thing. Now instead of sitting here and trying to scroll around and trying to get to the exact place with these scroll bars, I can just select the hand tool by hitting H. And that way I can smoothly move around and do my editing 
within that space. I have it mapped so when I hit zero, it goes back to its original size. So as long as I'm selected on here, I can hit the plus tool to zoom up, I can hit the minus tool to zoom down, and I can hit my zero key to go back to normal. The next one is the zoom tool. The keyboard equivalent is Z. So let's say I want to work on this area right here, just these two clips. I can select and draw a rectangle, bam. And it will go up and zoom in onto this area. Another thing you can do is, here's where the scroll bar is. You can also drag either sides of the scroll bar to zoom in and zoom out or to zoom things into view like that. The last we have is the typing tool or T on your keyboard. I use this all the time. Simply go up to the video, click somewhere and start typing. This is a dog. I don't like the look of that so I can select all that text and come over here and change the color. Let's change it from that color to black so it shows up. Boink. Let's change the font. I like this font. Let's change it to bold so you can really see it. And now I notice I spelled dog wrong, so let's put dog in there. Sorry, dogs. Now watch when I hit V on the keyboard. It goes back up to the selection tool, and I have these bars here. I can make this thing bigger, smaller, whatever I want to do. Dog. Let's add a period at the end. And now we have dog. Let's control enter, hit V on our keyboard. Let's put it up in this box we just made up here. Boop, boop, boop. Let's stick a dog up here and let's make them white. Boop, boop, bink. And there's our dog. You can also do some strange stuff by switching to the vertical typing tool. Now watch this. I click here and I type in, hello. It just makes type vertically. Dude. Let's make that bigger so you can see it and move it up there. I don't like the color, so I'll double click on it. It works just like any text editor or any other place. Let's grab that. Let's click on the color. Let's change the color to, oh, let's say black. Control enter. Then we've changed our text to black. Now you'll notice over here on this timeline over here, I have the video sitting below it. That's this thing. That's my rectangle that I made, which is above it and above that. That's my text of the dog, and you'll notice there's something above that. If I hold down control and I move the scroll wheel up, there's my hello. Doesn't matter, I'm gonna hit the tilde key and you'll be able to see this whole timeline. Boop! It doesn't matter, you could keep adding tracks and tracks, tracks up this way, and audio tracks down this way. Let's tilde back to the original there. This tilde key, by the way, is really handy. If you move over, for instance, the video and everything you're working on, if you put your mouse over here and hit tilde, boom, full screen. Let's move over here, boom, full screen. If I move over to these controls, boom, full screen. If I move over to the timeline, I got a full screen timeline, and that works with any panels that you may have open in Premiere Pro. That's really handy as you're going along, you wanna get in on things or move on things. Now there's so much you can do in this. I'm just scratching the surface, but this is just for beginners to look and see all these different tools and what they do. I hope you go out and test all these tools and try all these tools on your own. In much later videos, we'll be going into some more of the advanced stuff. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment on the video. I really do appreciate you watching. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Okay, we're recording. Introducing the toolbar. <laughs> no.